Good morning, good afternoon, or good night. My name is Ophelia Santos, and here we talk about history and mystery. And in this video, we're going to be talking about what really happened to the siblings of Queen Anne Boleyn. So we all know Queen Anne Boleyn, or if you don't know her, she was the second wife of King Henry II of England. And she had a very interesting life and a very tragic ending. Queen Anne Boleyn is seen by many as the epitome of the other woman, as King Henry VIII divorced his first wife Catherine of Aragon to marry her. Subsequently, he also divorced himself from the Catholic Church, forming the Anglican Church of England. So for all of this, Queen Anne Boleyn is a very famous historical figure and one of the most tragic royal historical figures. But little is known about her sister, Mary, and her brother, George. And that is exactly who we're going to be talking about today. What happened to them, who they were, and what happened to them after their sister, Anne, got executed. If you like this content, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and I'll see you on this video, on the next video, and many other videos, as we are on a road to 1,000 subscribers. Today, my eyes are really out of focus. <laughs> I'm starting a new medication, so everything looks very, very weird. It sucks. It sucks. But what doesn't suck is history, because I think it's absolutely fascinating. So with that said, let's talk about Mary Boleyn, who is probably more famous than her brother, George, and also fascinating on her own. While her actual date of birth is unknown, some historians place her birth between 1499 and 1509. And she was most likely born in Norfolk in the family house, but grew up in Hever Castle in Kent, where she received a very interesting and typical education for someone of her status embroidery, house of administration, writing, reading, music, dancing, and she had a very cosmopolitan air about her. Like, she was very much an it girl. Mary and Anne have been described as being charming and beautiful, and Mary was certainly the prettier of the two of them. We don't really have pictures of her or arts of her. We have a couple of them that we think belong to her, but it is a bit, you know, murky. However, we do have a lot about her personality. As I explained, she was very much an it girl. She loved dancing, she loved music, and because of all of this, there are a lot of rumors about her promiscuity. It is said when she traveled at age 15 to France to be a lady-in-waiting to Princess Mary Tudor, she had a lot of affairs and romances, including with King Francis I of France, who called her my English mare, my hickney, and a whore. Classy. Were all these rumors true? I don't know, I was not there. But we must remember that perhaps she was a bit promiscuous, but most likely all of this was exaggerated because she didn't conform to the gender norms of her time. Nevertheless, in 1519, her father brought her back to England, and in 1520, she made a striking marriage to a diplomat. She made a striking marriage to a diplomat and courtier known as William Carey. But we do know that King Henry VIII and Queen Catherine of Aragon were between the attendants to this wedding. We also know this marriage positioned Mary in a very important place in court, and her husband and her own political career or court career flourish under the circumstances because she became a mistress to King Henry VIII of England. Mm -hmm. Mary, Mary was busy. Mary was busy, guys. She became a mistress to him for a while, and this definitely place her in not only a very ambitious and powerful place because the Tudor, Tudor relationships were everything back then. Like you gotta understand that in Tudor England, who you were friends with, who you were in a relationship with, who you were married to and who you knew could definitely destroy or make you more powerful very much networking. So Mary became a mistress to King Henry VIII of England, but we don't really know when this started. 
and when it ended. And there were also rumors that her two children were the children of Henry and not William. However, it is very important to understand that King Henry never really claimed these children like he did with Henry Fitzroy by Elizabeth Lizzie Blount, but he didn't claim a lot of many of his alleged offsprings. Those rumors are just simply rumors. However, her husband William Carey passed away due to the sweating sickness and he left Mary almost impoverished with a lot of debt and here Anne stepped up and helped her secure a really good pension of a hundred pounds annually and a hundred pounds annually will be roughly about ninety thousand dollars in today's money so as well as you as well as having her nephew via William and Mary as her ward so she could take care of their education so she really stepped up and it appeared they were somewhat close we don't really know a lot about how their relationship worked we don't really have those records what we do know is that mary fell in love during the 1530s and she fell in love with a man called william stafford and william stafford was the younger son of an essex lord this meant that he was a soldier and he didn't make a lot of money, but Mary fell in love with him so hard that she secretly married him. And this marriage was kept a secret until she became pregnant. And Queen Anne, by this point, she was Queen of England. She was pissed. Like, she was so mad about this because Mary had no business dating a man that was lower born that she caught Mary off and her entire family, the entire Boleyn family caught Mary off and they exposed her from court. Mary's financial situation deteriorated so hard that she wrote to Thomas Cromwell, the king's advisor, asking her to speak to someone, but he did not reply. The only thing Anne Boleyn did for Mary was giving her a golden cup and some cash. And that was the last Thing we know they ever spoke about if they spoke at, at all there are also some letters from mary to Anne that are absolutely heartbreaking it is kind of challenging to reconstruct mary's life from 1534 until queen anne's death in 1539 we don't really know much about what happened um in the movie the other boleyn girl it's presented as if mary boleyn was in the um, in the execution, but that could have not been possible. So we don't really know what happened to Mary Boleyn after this and what happened after Queen Anne was executed. What we do know is she died on July 19, 1543 of undetermined circumstances. Her two children, Catherine and Henry Carey, made important marriages and their contributions have been largely felt in the arts. They became kind of patrons of the arts and they were also in the diplomatic world and Mary in herself has gained a bit more of notoriety especially by those who believe she actually had more of a role in her sister's lives than we previously thought about. So with that we now move on to George Boleyn who we know less about but we do know a lot about his political career. It is known he married Jane Parker in 1524, and here is where we find our first enigma with George Boleyn. Because with Mary and Anne, we know about their personalities. We know they were very cosmopolitan. They were very much this it girl. They were, they had this uh, genesis quo about them that they were so magnetic, and they're so fascinating today. With George, it appears he was kind of the same. He had a very charming and magnetic personality and he was very young when he made this marriage to Jane Parker and when he became a diplomat just like his father. This is registered in a lot of these historical records that he was very young and people were just like, how is this kid coming into these meetings and speaking and being very powerful? he just he was just charming and he was described as having Anne's charm with Anne pride but he was also kind of described as a bit of a womanizer there are these um interesting poems that kind of reveal he could have been a bit of a, a womanizer but that he was also deeply religious 
um, historians have been trying to find out more about George's personalities just because of his connection to Anne Boleyn, especially in the trial. But we don't really know that much about him. We do know that he was married, but he might have not had any children. And there have been allegations that he probably was bisexual, but these are allegations, these are rumors. There are other rumors that he was even um, asexual but this is not known and so I'm not gonna tell you here that that's who he was because we don't really know these are all allegations this is all very much a rumor and even historians don't seem to be on the same page about about George Boleyn George was named gentleman of the privy chamber which this meant he was kind of like a gentleman in waiting to King Henry VIII and as I said before your connections and your net worth and your networking abilities in Tudor England were absolutely everything so this meant he was very much a very powerful gentleman and he used to play with Henry a lot. He used to play chess and games and cards and he was even mentioned in the Privy Purse as one of the people Henry would spend the most time with. He was very well loved by King Henry VIII of England and he was great friends with King Francis I of France as well. So it would be an understatement to say that his career did not flourish when his sister became queen because it definitely did. He became very powerful powerful and he what we do know about him and his personality is that he loved the arts he loved poetry and he was very much a, pa a patron of the arts a patron of poetry and that yeah basically when his sister became queen of england he was right up there with her riding the wave riding the 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 power riding the money he was enjoying it all and it seemed that it really seemed like george had everything on his hands like he could have been such a great diplomat and he, he was a great diplomat he was a great ambassador by all I read he did great things he did what he had to do and he was very much enjoying the high life but it all came crashing down when his sister could not deliver Henry VIII what he most wanted which was a male heir it all came crashing down for George by this point of course Mary was out of court so Thomas Cromwell and King Henry VIII and his supporters, they crafted this plot line because I don't have I don't have another way of saying it. They crafted this plot line, this script, and this entire storyline that Anne was cheating on the king with many men, including a Game of Thrones moment with her brother George, that they were having incestuous relationships, and that she was cheating on him with him as well as charges of witchcraft george of course when he realized this he was absolutely shocked he was very much insulted by this and he and his trial which occurred two days after his sisters he put on an amazing defense to the point that those who even who didn't even like him they bought it they said like you know what this guy is absolutely innocent because he was you know he was innocent but what I mean is like he made a great case for himself and people were sure he would be scotch-free after this. But sadly, those were not the plans of Henry and Cromwell who pretty much made up their mind and he was found guilty. So when he was escorted to the execution, when he was going to be beheaded and the scaffold, he made an imposing speech about religion and his own feelings and his faith in God and all these things that he just felt inside and people were moved to tears by his own speech and, and he made his way to the scaffold where he was beheaded two days before his sister Anne. And his legacy has lived on as a very interesting political figure, a very interesting patron of the arts, but definitely a more shadowy and hidden away figure than Anne Boleyn and his sister Mary. What do you think? What do you think about these interesting historical figures? What do you think about Mary and George and Anne? And I don't know, maybe tell me who's your favorite Boleyn? Who's your favorite Boleyn sibling? Um, I, I'm definitely, I, 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 I love them all. I think they're all very interesting. I, I am, I wish we knew more about Mary, definitely. So I don't know, let me know. Follow me on social media. We'll be linked in the description below. Subscribe and I'll see you next time with more videos on history and mystery.